you for tuning in. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another original series. And today I do have the lovely Seiko Alpinist, which I'm going to review. Now this review is going to be um, quite in depth. It's going to be done in a couple of parts. Um, and the reason being is because this watch uh, has got a massive, massive heritage uh, behind it. It's got bags full of history um, and, and so much significance uh, in this one watch. Uh, and I think it's important to cover that. Now, the original series with a few of my watches, I do use words like iconic, historic, etc. Uh, with the other reviews I've done. Um, and it's not different to this. But I think out of the ones I have reviewed so far, this does have the most significant history behind it. So first I'm going to cover... Um, a slight bit of history behind it then I'll actually move into the watch and then I'll go slightly off tangent uh, into something because I really want to cover that as well so without talking too much um, and just getting straight into it let's go into why is this watch so uh, historically significant um, to Seiko's well first this watch um, has been around since 1960, uh, 1961. Now, not this exact watch, but the actual Alpinist um, brand, it's been around since since the 1960s. So, all those years, this watch still hasn't died. And it's been discontinued, and there's been, to date, seven generations of this watch. So, this started back in 1961 with the first alpinist and it was called the alpinist laurel as you can see from the picture very old watch and laurel was a sub brand of a company called Seikosha. now Seikosha um, was became known as seiko and before it was um known as seiko they should produce a couple of watches under the Laurel brand. I don't know if you know that, but now you do. Now, that watch had a three-year, yeah, that's what it was. It had a three-year um, time where it was in production. And then they moved on to the 1963 Alpinist Champion 850. Now the Alpinist Champion 850, uh, the name 850 was given because of the movement uh, that was in there. That watch um, was around for a few years. In fact, it was around for, it was another 30 years till the third generation was introduced. Now in between that, there was a limited edition of the Alpinist Champion 850. Um, and as I go through these um, different generations. They are they are limited editions um, for certain sets, but I won't go into limited editions. I'll just stick to um, the main the main changes. Now, after the nineteen sixty three Alpinist Champion came uh, the Red Alpinist in nineteen ninety five. Now this Red Alpinist that came out in 1995 was 30 years after the 1963 champion. Now this was, uh, as you saw in the pictures, it was a drastic um, change. Obviously you've got 30 years, you've moved on by 30 years. So this watch featured um, the 4S 15 caliber. It had a sapphire crystal with a Cyclops date, um, magnifier and the movement it ran was a eight beats a second. Um, so a high beat movement, 28, 800, I believe. And it also had, um, the noticeable change it had was a 4 p.m. crown for the inner bezel, um, similar to the one I've got here. 
So this was when this was introduced in 1995. Now, interestingly enough, regarding the Alpinist on that point, that was designed, designed by somebody called Shigeo Sakar. Let me say his name properly. Sakari. And he had uh, the inspiration behind the green dial. It came in a few color options, but the inspiration behind the actual green dial was a mini rover, uh, and that's by his own words, which is a British um, car. So now you do have a bit of British influence in this watch. Obviously, the Seiko, obviously, we know it's Japanese, and the whole reason, if I rewind slightly, um, it was made for Japanese mountaineers. Um, they wanted to make the first sort of um, sports watch um, and they needed this um, tool style watch for the Japanese mountaineers. As you know, there's a lot of mountain uh, ranges in Japan. So I think it's really interesting that, you know, being in that side of the world, that um, Britain did have an influence um, on on the dial for the Seiko. Um, and it was the same for the Saab 17, but we move on to that. Now, obviously green, you know, you've got British racing green, um, you've got a lot of tweed uh, that the Brits wear, uh, and sort of khaki colours, you know, when you're going out hunting or, you know, along with the motorsport, uh, this green was quite notable um, to Britain. I think the change was fantastic. I mean, the high beat movement, uh, we need to see a lot more of that in, in the current um, sort of watch market from Seiko. And at the moment, it's only limited to, obviously, you've got the old, older watches that use the high beat movement, like the King Seikos. But the newer stuff with the high beat movement is like over over £1,500, £2,000. So it needs to be a bit more affordable. So moving on to 2003. Uh, the next generation was the Alpinist uh, 8F56, I'm going to say. Now, what made, as you can see in the picture, it, there is a GMT hand on there. So what made this different? It used a quartz movement, which is an 8F56, extremely accurate movement. And it featured a GMT um hand now uh within this range there are a few notable limited editions which are really really um, sought after collectible watches and i think they do look fantastic uh, and they stepped away from the automatic movements which does show you how important quartz was um around this time uh, and because they went away from the automatic movement Now, from the 2003 Alpinist, we now come to uh, the 2006 generation, which was the Saabs. So you had the Saab 13, Saab uh, 15, and Saab 17, which the 017, which I'm holding in my hand. The 13 and the 15 are the color options. So you've got a cream dial and you've got a black dial. Now, this color option is quite common amongst the Alpinist range. Um, and all throughout this whole uh, all the generations they have stuck with certain things like having Alpinist on the dial or having the Alpinist mountain logo let's fucking catch it on the back now Seiko do have a few designers now when it came around to design uh, the 2006 Saab we had somebody called Yashiro Kazuya. Uh, and no, it's not the Kazuya from Tekken. Sorry, bad joke. Um, so this was designed in 2006. Now again, uh, the designer used, um, he was inspired by something British. Uh, and so Britain had yet another influence uh, on the Alpinist. And this was actually inspired not by a car, but by um, some fly fishing gear so uh, the designer was a fly fisher and he saw um, this color green um, on the manufacturer's logo for the fly fishing and this all ties in with the whole reason the alpinist was made it was, a, it was meant to be a tool watch uh, utility watch so for mountaineering 
fishing, hunting, etc. Obviously, with uh, even though the inner compass came later on. So moving on from 2006, in 2009 they released um, the 59 model and the 61, which you'll see the pictures of it now. As you can see with the pictures, so they are quite different um, from the normal Alpine range. Um, they do look more diver style, but they're not divers, so they, they become thicker, chunkier. Um, the compass was no, no longer an inner um, rotating ring. It was on the outside on the actual bezel, uh, so a chunkier, thicker watch. Uh, and it, I believe it was released uh, for them to actually be collectibles. And then, which brings us on after the 2009 model to the... 2020 now before the 2020 they released a limited edition uh, which was like this but in the, the sunburst blue and that was released for the USA US market and those are obviously quite expensive at the moment um, and then so then we moved on to the new uh, edition 2020 With the 2020, very similar to the style I'm holding in my hand, um, but it actually has the Prospects logo on there, um, on the actual dial. And Seiko call it um, Alpinist inspired. I don't know why. Um, just stuck to just calling it what it what it is, um, because it's far from inspired. It is the same thing. Um, and just on that point, um, I'm glad Seiko haven't killed this range. You know. Um, we've had ranges like the Turtles, 60 or 9 Turtles, which actually, you know, became or evolved into uh, the 702 and the SKX Diver, uh, whereas Alpinist is stayed as a sort of um, a side model they do. Um, they've kept it going from the 1960s. So um, that's the history very briefly covered. Um, and that gives you the significance of this piece here you know like i said it's got massive massive history behind it um it is a very iconic piece in that sense um apart from it being just absolutely drop dead gorgeous um you know th there is all that significance behind it which makes it even more of a collectible watch